we are trying to understand theory of business and as a first step we started looking at perfect competition a market structure in the short run and let us quickly recap what we have learned in the last three videos the first thing we established is that the firms want to maximize total profits and by this we mean the firm essentially wants to figure out the output level at which total profits will be at a maximum and so this is a major objective of the firm and in the last two videos what we did is we tried to understand what are profits which is the difference between total revenue and total cost and and the firm can determine the output level at which it maximizes total profits by simply looking at the difference between total revenue and total cost and that will and through that we can determine at what output level the firm will maximize total profits another way to do the same thing is we can figure out or we may know what are average profits what are average profits is the difference between average revenue and average total cost once we have these numbers and we know how much output is produced by the firm we can figure out how much will be total profits it will simply be average profits times quantity of output sold what will be total revenue it will be average revenue times quantity of output sold how much will be total cost it will be average total cost times quantity sold so we can figure out total revenue from average revenue and total cost from average total cost and the difference between these two will once again give us total profits <clears throat> another concept we developed is the marginal concept and what is marginal it's the when we look at how much revenue is generated by one unit of output or an additional unit of output and how much it costs to produce it and one of the rules we figured out based particularly on our discussion in the last video is that total profits are at a maximum when number 1 mr equals mc and number 2 mc curve intersects mr from below if these two conditions are satisfied once again the total profits will be at a maximum now the reason why we have gone through these three concepts the total the average and the marginal concepts is number one all these are related to one another and so if we are given one set of figures like marginal figures we should be able to figure out rest of the things similarly if we are given average figures we should be able to figure out what will be the best decision for this business another thing philosophers or economists have figured out is sometimes we do not have the entire picture with ourselves or the total concepts with ourselves and what we do is at every point in time we try to make the best decision and what we do is we look at the benefit of doing an activity and compare it to the cost and if the benefit is greater than the cost we'll go ahead and do that activity and if cost happen to be greater than benefit then we'll not do that activity consider for example and this is called marginal analysis you want you have to decide whether you should come and attend a lecture on economics and what you'll do in your mind you'll try to figure out what is the benefit of coming to the class and then you'll compare it to the cost of coming to the class and if you think the benefit outweighs the cost you'll go ahead and attend the class and if it's the other way around you will not come and attend the class so this is called marginal decision making and this is what we'll focus on now the general principles that i've talked about on the previous slide relating to total average and marginal concepts these can be used in any market structure and as a first step what we have been doing is trying to understand perfect competition and so let us use those concepts to a market structure called 
perfect competition. Now look at the following diagram. Now what you have <coughs> is the following. These diagrams are not drawn to scale. On this side what we have is we are looking at the world market which is obviously very large and this diagram applies to just one seller or one firm. Now look at any product and we will have a world demand for this product. We will have a world supply for these products. And we know demand curve is downward sloping, the supply curve is upward sloping. And wherever these two curves intersect, we have equilibrium. At equilibrium, the price of this good is determined. Let's call it P superscript E. Now, this world price is determined obviously in the world market. Now, if you look at this from the perspective of one seller who is very small in relation to the world market, what the seller will do is take this world price as given and try to do the best he or she can or the firm can. So this line, this green line, in a way represents the demand curve that is faced by the small seller. And at what level is this defined? This is defined at the level of world prices. And we know price is the same thing as average revenue. And if the firm is a price taker like it is in the case of perfect competition, this will equal marginal revenue. So a, a single firm under perfect competition will face a horizontal demand curve. So we know about how a firm decides on this particular price and we are looking at this from the perspective of one seller. And what I have done on this diagram, we already got this price equals average revenue equals marginal revenue from the previous slide. On this what I have done is I have drawn the marginal cost curve and the average total cost curve. Now look at this point E. This will represent equilibrium for the firm or the best point for the firm. Why? Because at this point, MR equals MC. And number two, the MC curve intersects MR curve from below. So both conditions are satisfied. So this must represent equilibrium for a perfectly competitive firm in the short run. Based on this, we can drop this point to the horizontal axis and determine how much output will be produced by this firm. So we know how much output will be produced by this firm. It will be OQE. Now look at the following. This vertical distance OB represents price or marginal revenue or average revenue. And if we multiply average revenue times quantity, that will give us total revenue. So it will be OB times OQE and this will give us total revenue. Total revenue. What about total cost? What we do is we try to figure out how much will be the average total cost of production when the firm produces this level of output and what do we do? We take this output level to the ATC curve and figure out what will be the average total cost of production and it will be this vertical distance or which is the same thing as OA, this vertical distance. So OA times the output produced which is OQE will give us total cost of production, total cost of production. <clears throat> and the difference between these two will give us the total profits. And let me just show this to you. So it will be total profits will be represented by this area of this rectangle, which is, I'll just write this down, A, B, E, C. And so we can determine equilibrium level of output and also figure out what will be the total profits made by the firm using this diagram. Now this diagram is exactly the same like the one we had on the previous slide except for one thing. 
I have included now average variable cost curve. Now given the world price P1 which the firm has taken as given, we know E1 will be the equilibrium point and at this point the firm will produce say just as an example Q1 units of output. Now suppose the world price falls and it lands at a point like this one and let me just place this price line where I want it and it comes here at this point and so now E2 will be the equilibrium point for the firm and how much output will be produced by the firm it will be Q2 and at P2 you will observe this price P2 that this equals average total cost of production and that means the firm is in a situation of no profit no loss now if the world prices fall below P2 what should the firm do we know the firm will start incurring losses but the question that we have in mind is should this firm quit business or should it stay in business when it is incurring losses and the decision rule that we have come up with is the following and that is as long as price equals average variable cost it is fine for the firm to stay in business so if the price is say P3 the firm is incurring losses but at this price <clears throat> at this price this equals average variable cost of production so if the firm is incurring losses we know what will be the equilibrium here it will be E3 what will be the output produced by the firm it will be Q3 we believe the firm may be incurring losses between P2 and P3 but it should continue in business as long as the price is between P2 and P3 but if it falls below P3 then the firm should quit business <clears throat> and that means and this you will observe this E3 this is the minimum of AVC so if the price let me write this rule falls below the minimum of AVC the firm should quit business but if it is above this and even though the firm is incurring losses it should stay in business simply because you never know when the world prices will increase <clears throat> and so this becomes the decision rule for the firm and what is minimum AVC or what is AVC it is the cost of labor labor is the variable input so if you are not able to pay rent on your building it is fine but if on top of that if you cannot pay your workers your wages and you also cannot pay rent on the building that's a time for you to quit another thing you will observe here is the following look at the marginal cost curve this one which is above the minimum of AVC what it contains information is about different price levels different price levels and different quantity produced or in other words this marginal cost curve above the minimum of AVC is the supply curve of this perfectly competitive firm it contains information about price and quantity of output supply so what we have learned is if price falls below the minimum of AVC the firm should quit business otherwise it should stay in business that's number one that we have learned and this is what it is number two what we figured out in the previous slide is the MC curve above the minimum of AVC represents the short-run supply curve for a perfectly competitive firm and here is the diagram we have output here on the horizontal axis price or as in dollars on the vertical axis and this is the supply curve for a perfectly competitive firm in the short run and this starts at the minimum of AVC and it is just the rising stretch of MC curve and this completes our discussion of perfect competition in the short run. Thank you.